Hi, Bill from CJ Pony Parts. If you've been around the classic car market long enough, you've probably heard the term rotisserie restoration. Rotisserie is going to help you do a more thorough restoration by allowing you to get your car up off the ground and rotate it 360 degrees so you have access to the underside of the chassis. Since the bodywork on our forgotten fastback is now finished, we're ready to put up on a rotisserie so we can work on the chassis and more on the suspension. So today, we're going to show you how to assemble a rotisserie and how to put your Mustang up on it. Due to the size of the rotisserie, it's broken down on this pallet for shipping, so some assembly is going to be required. This kit's height adjustable. We also order the optional Mustang bumper brackets, which allow the rotisserie to bolt right to the bumper holes. Once your rotisserie is assembled, it's going to be longer than your car, so you want to make sure you have plenty of room before you start putting it together. First step, take everything off the pallet, spread it out, grab the instructions, make sure you have everything you need. For this installation, you need a jack and jack stands or a lift, 3 8 ratchet, short extension, 9 16 shallow socket, 3 quarter shallow socket, 5 8 deep socket, 3 quarter deep socket, half inch ratchet, short extension, 24 millimeter socket, 1 and 1 8 socket, crescent wrench, 3 quarter wrench, and a 5 8 wrench. Once they have everything out of the box and off the pallet, it's pretty much what we're left with. I'm going to grab one of the large bolts, the roller, the lock washer, and the nut itself, and then one of the uprights. Put the roller in. Just get it hand tight for now. No reason to tighten them down just yet. Now we're going to install the leg extension to the upright in one of these plates, two of the longer bolts with washers and nuts and two of the slightly shorter ones with washers and nuts. The shorter ones are going to go in the bottom. They're going to go through the upright. Larger ones will go in the top. They're going to go around the side of it and then through the plate in the back. Now put lock washers and nuts on everything. Now we're going to install the casters. You're going to use the caster without the brake. It's going to go on the center extensions. On the corners, you use the ones with the brakes. They have pre-welded brackets. You just slide them into place here. We'll install a supplied carriage bolt. And we'll tighten it down. Once you have the wheels on, we'll want to lock them, just make sure it doesn't roll away while we're working on it. The jack support bar is going to have this plastic shield inside with the round tube on top. We're going to grab the largest nut and bolt that come in the kit, and it's going to hold this to your main bracket. Move it down to the farthest hole for now, put the bolt through and thread the knot on the other side. Now we're going to install the jack. The jack's going to mount to these holes down here on the lower T-brace and these holes on the pipe that we just installed. Use these hitch pins and these cotter pins to install it. Jack up in place here. Next, we're going to install the pivot tube inside our main bracket here. We want to put a little grease on it before we install it. We'll make sure when you install it, this hole here is facing up. I'll put the support ring on the back, put the bolt through, and again, another lock washer with a nut on the bottom. I'll install the stop bolt on the top, thread it down until you feel it touch the pipe. Now we're ready to install our upper T-bar. It's going to connect to this balancer piece, which is going to mount on first to weld the nut 
facing towards the bracket. The T-bar is going to mount in this channel here, be held in place by this piece of steel. You want to get it up into place and just rest it on here and then put the plate on. Now you'll want to tighten up the two nuts for the plate as well as the bolt nut for the balancer. Now we'll take the threaded rod. We're going to thread this to the nut in the back of the balancer into the bottom of the pivot tube. Spray a little bit first before we do so. Now we're ready to install our attachment arms. Before you do so, you want to tighten down this bolt in the center. That'll stop it from swaying side to side when you install the arms. Now we're going to install the attachment arms. You want to make sure they're a mirror image of each other with the threaded nuts facing upward when you install them on the bars. Location's not important yet. We're just going to put them on so they're on. We'll measure them out when we put the car on the rotisserie. These can just be hand tight for now. Now that we're finished with the assembly on this side, we're going to move on to the other side. The assembly's going to be pretty much exactly the same. There's only one small difference. I'm going to show you that right now. This is the difference with the other side. Instead of having a stop bolt on the top, it has a spring-loaded clip, and it has this ring that goes on instead of the normal stops. It installs the same way. It slides over the back. You need to put a bolt through it. Put a lock washer and a nut on. Now this side, instead of removing the bolt, you're going to pull back on this, and that will allow you to turn it, and it'll lock into place. The kit comes with five pieces for your center bar. For the Mustang, you're only going to need three of them. You want two of these larger pieces here, the welded nuts, and one of the smaller pieces. Welded nut pieces are going to go in each end. What you want to do here is take the smaller one, put it inside the larger one, and put them both into our other end piece. And we'll get an approximate width, put some bolts in the top and tighten them down. At this point, they all need to be hand tight just so the bars simply don't move. Once you have them in, we're ready to put it underneath our car. Now that we have our rotisserie underneath the car, we're ready to work on the brackets. Your front rotisserie bracket is going to bolt to these two holes here on the side of the frame rail where your bumper brackets are going to go. You have this piece, no stone guard, no grill, and no hood. You can simply take the arm of the rotisserie, drill a secondary hole, and bolt this right to it. Since we want to keep the sheet metal in place, we're going to use some bumper brackets. This is the bumper bracket kit that we offer. It comes in plate steel. What you want to do is line it up resting on the frame rail and then drill out the two holes so you can use your bumper bracket bolts to hold it in place. The bracket's installed. You can see now we have plenty of clearance at the front of our Mustang. Adding the additional space though, we did have to add the fifth metal bars to the inside of the rotisserie. It originally would have fit with three. Once we put this on and put them just on the edge so it'd be safe, we added the fourth and fifth bar. This is the bracket for your rear bumper bracket location. Like the other one's gonna come in solid steel. You wanna hold it up to the holes for the bumper bracket and then mark it and drill it out. Now we're gonna install the bracket through the holes here. Since we're bolting to a flat panel, you want to make sure you use good hardware since this is going to be supporting the weight of the car. We're going to loosen the bolt here so we can actually separate our artistic from the other side. Push it out of the way, it makes it easier for us to line up with our bumper brackets. What you want to do is loosen these two bolts here, 
allows you to slide these back and forth to line them up with the bracket. Now we can adjust our height. I want to make sure we put our brakes on on both wheels. Get those loose in these two here. Now we can thread this in to raise our lift. We have our car up on a lift that's so a little bit higher up than it normally would be. If you're down on jack stands, you can remove this bolt here and use the jack to lower it all the way down. We'll turn our wheel locks off. Install our hardware. Once we have the height right, retighten these. The aim to get the rotisserie as centered as possible. I'm gonna make sure the distance from the bracket to the outside edge is about the same on both sides. Get it right, it should pretty much line up perfectly with the gas filler. Then we can tighten these down. Again, we'll start by loosening the brace for the support on the bottom. Once you've tightened down the threaded rod to get your height correct, we're going to slide it into place here with the brackets. Again, you want to make sure it's as straight and even as possible on both sides. And these bars will go all the way through your brackets. And I'll touch the bottom of your radiator support. So then we'll tan tight these and then we'll tighten everything down. Now you want to tighten all the bolts for your brace. All right, and once you have these all nice and tight, we're ready to remove your jack or your lift. At this point, to get your car off jack stands, you want to make sure the jack is tight. Jack it up until you get a little bit of play in this bolt here. Like that. And now you can jack your car safely off your jack stands. You want to remove the jack stands and lower the car back down so you can get the bolt back in this location here. Now that we have it on the rotisserie, we're ready to balance it so we can turn it up on its side so we can work on the other side of the car. We found in the front, you want to jack it up to the second hole and in the back on the highest third hole to make the car nice and flat, then you can start to balance it. To balance the car's weight on the rotisserie, we're going to start by loosening these two bolts here, which allow this to slide up and down. We'll put our wrench on the top of this and thread this to move it up to find the balance point. Typically, when you're going to put the car on the rotisserie, you're going to want the bare shell. In our case, we have fenders, doors, hood, our rears in the car, some front suspension in the car. We have a lot more weight than we should, so we found we have to thread it pretty much all the way to the top to get the car to the point where we can flip it up on its side. To rotate the car, you want to loosen the bolt in the back of the rotisserie. Then you have this geared stop here. Spring that back, lock it in place, and that'll allow you to turn it. Now that we have our Mustang up on a rotisserie, it's going to be a lot easier to do some seam sealing and painting of the chassis. Figure out a few hours to assemble the rotisserie and get the Mustang up on it. You'll be back working on your restoration before you know it.